bombshell news in the world of college football. And even if you are not a UNLV fan, you are going to want to watch the whole thing because the details are juicy and we got them here on the Unafraid Show. Uh, make sure that you guys like, subscribe, tell a friend, and most importantly, share and get notifications. Leave comments too. All right, so last night I was finishing the radio show on Sirius and then a tweet from Brett McMurphy popped up. So this is 10 o'clock Pacific. And last night, Matthew Sluka, starting quarterback for UNLV, 3-0 UNLV, a team that has a legitimate shot at making the college football playoff, uh, that he was not going to be playing the rest of the season because representations had been made to him and that uh, they were not being upheld, and that he was going to be redshirting and transferring somewhere else. So here is the statement that he put out on um, Instagram. I have decided to utilize my redshirt year and will not be playing any additional games this season. I committed to UNLV based upon certain representations that were made to me, which were not upheld after I enrolled. And despite discussions, it became clear that these commitments would not be fulfilled in the future. I wish my teammates the best of luck in the season and continued success of the program. So nice way on the way out. So I'm going to give you guys the entire backstory here so you can understand who the players are and how we got here. So, and then you can decide in the comments who you think is telling the truth and who do you think is lying and who is at fault. Um, so Matthew Sluka uh, says that he was, the representations are surrounding $100,000 that he was agreed upon when he came over to UNLV. So he played four years at Holy Cross. It's important to note that Matthew Sluka is a senior. He's not a freshman, not a sophomore, not a junior. This is his last hurrah in college football. So he played at Holy Cross and took them to the FCS playoffs. He's a two-time Walter Payton Award finalist, which is the Heisman for FCS in 2022 and 2023, a finalist. In 2023, Patriot League Offensive Player of the Year, 23 FCS Football Central All-American first team, and 2023 uh, AP All-American third team. So this dude's a player. Almost 6,000 yards uh, passing with, with 59 touchdowns, 35, 83 yards rushing, and 38 touchdowns. So the dude's already at, uh, what, 90, 98 touch, 97 touchdowns in his career? And then when he left to hit the portal, a bunch of schools wanted him. So it wasn't just UNLV. But he committed to UNLV. And then on the Offbeat Sports Show on YouTube, he said that he went out to UNLV in January, loved Brennan Marion's offense, who's a terrific offensive coordinator, and will soon be either a big-time offensive coordinator at Power 5 school or a head coach soon. But anyways, he committed there. And in that interview, he said that before he even entered the portal, he had already had conversations with an agent. Now, that's going to be important a little bit later um, because there have been allegations that he hired an agent recently, but it appears that that's not true. So and um, because it appears that based upon his social media feed that he actually hired an agent three days before he signed with UNLV. Okay. So Sluka transfers to UNLV. He beat out Campbell transfer Hodge Malik Williams and has led UNLV to a 3-0 record. Six touchdowns, 250 yards rushing. Now, the kid hasn't been perfect, but the team has been good. They've been scoring points. Now, uh, he has sub-50% completion percentage. But he also has guys like Ty Hillenbrandt, out of the solid verbal college football podcast saying that he has legitimate NFL potential. And now this is not the first time that this has happened in terms of a player leaving a college in the middle of the year and transferring. But this is the first time that we've seen it happen over NIL. And Charlie Brewer did it at Utah after losing the job to Cam Rising. But this is a totally different situation. So last night when Sluka announced that he was going to be making a transfer, the first reporting that actually happened 
that came from inside information came uh, 10 minutes later from a Las Vegas reporter named Paloma Villacana, if hopefully I'm pronouncing her name correctly, who happened to be the co-host of the Red Zone Sport, sorry, the Reb Zone, like Rebels, as in UNLV, the Reb Zone Sports Show with UNLV head coach Barry Odom. And her tweet said, per source, UNLV quarterback Matt Sluka has been approached with more money to transfer. All right. So the first report that we have, which we can reasonably assume came from Barry Odom himself or somebody around him because she co-hosts a show with him, was that another team offered Matthew Sluka money to leave UNLV and redshirt. And then the next insider dropped at 6 a.m. Pacific this morning. And it was from 247 college football analyst Carl Reed, who goes by Coach Reed live on social media. And Carl Reed then reported, and he said, all finan- quote, all financial commitments for UNLV quarterback Matthew Sluka were completely met. But after wins against uh, Kansas and Houston, Sluka's family hired an agent, and they collectively feel that his market value has increased per source. Okay, so that on its face looks really, really bad. Okay, so, and you're wondering who the hell is Carl Reed? So Carl Reed was a high school coach in Missouri and Barry Odom started coaching high school football in Missouri. And so they know each other. So it's reasonable for us to assume that Reed's information possibly came from Odom or Odom circle. But Carl Reed is also listed as the social media contact for their offensive coordinator, Brennan Marion on his Instagram and UNLV's offensive coordinator, uh, Yeah, I already talked about him, but he definitely, Carl Reed definitely has ties to the UNLV program. So you would think, okay, this is a man that is going to be credible. So the first two credible reports made three claims. Number one, that Matthew Sluka was purchased off the UNLV team. Number two, that UNLV did not short Matthew Sluka on any promised money. And then the third claim is that Matthew Sluka hired an agent after UNLV won its first couple of games. Okay. But we know that Matthew Sluka had said that he had conversations with an agent while he was at Holy Cross. So that's the first thing that makes you be like, hmm, hmm. And remember, these rules around NIL are constantly changing. And uh, when the rules changed after the uh, lawsuit settlement, you could enter into a contract when you were going to a school. So things have changed. And we have reported on what's happening in Georgia, where Governor Kemp has now signed into uh, an executive order that the schools, that the colleges out there can engage in NIL deals with players directly with the university, and there's nothing the NCAA can do to uh, punish them. And you know that's going to spread like wildfire across the country because every other state is not going to want Georgia to have an advantage. Okay, so if we go back and scroll on Matthew Sluka's social media, we see a tweet from January 19th saying that he was signed to Equity Sports. And that's three days not before, like I said, or excuse me, after he committed to UNLV. Now, mid-January and mid-September are two different things, saying he just hired an agent, and that happened in mid-January. And maybe you could say that he hired a new agent, but the rebuttals this morning all came from either Sluka's brother, Rob, who has since deleted his Twitter account, or Sluka's father, or his agent, Marcus Cromartie, who is employed by Equity Sports. And if you recognize the name Marcus Cromartie, he's cousins with Dominic Rogers Cromartie and Antonio Cromartie and played seven years in the NFL. So let's get back to the media rebuttals about Matthew Sluka's claim. So his father, Bob Sluka, told Adam Rittenberg at ESPN that um, 
that his son's agents agreed to an NIL deal with the school back in February, and they have never received payments despite requests and never asked for any adjustments to the original deal. We had, <laughs> we have no idea what the hell happened. And Pete Thamel reported also of ESPN quote, former UNLV quarterback, uh, Matthew Sluka's NIL representation, Marcus Cromartie of equity sports told ESPN that Sluka was verbally promised a minimum of a hundred thousand dollars from a UNLV assistant coach for transferring there. None of the money was paid per Cromartie. So once Sluka enrolled at UNLV, there was no effort by the UNLV's collective to formalize the contract at the amount months after Sluka enrolled and Cromartie made multiple efforts with the staff and school to address the issue. So, and Cromartie says that the school and the collective came back with a contract of $3,000 per month for the next four months. And that is $88,000 less than what Cromartie said the UNLV had promised up front. And that the only money that Sluka had received from UNLV per Cromartie is a $3,000 relocation stipend for his move. Now, Cromartie also said that there was never an ask for any more money after UNLV's hot 3-0 start. Only the initial amount that he was promised up front. And when that money didn't come, that's when Sluka started to evaluate his options and decided to play somewhere else. Now the red shirt is going to allow him to play, will transfer and move as soon as the season is over with, and then enroll there and go through spring ball, summer, and be ready to roll in the fall. Because he actually enrolled in UNLV in July after he graduated from Holy Cross and he did miss the spring. But then you had Pete Nikos at on three who filed a similar report rep, uh, with comments from the UNLV collective and Matthew Lucas agent. And here are the highlights of uh, Pete uh, Nikos's um, report. He said that Marcus Cromartie said that he had a conversation with an unnamed assistant coach, which is cool. You shouldn't blast people like that, where they talked about a number north of a hundred and, a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and Cromarty said to on three, "This was a number that I was told would be given to Matt to come there." And Matthew committed in January, enrolled in July, and Cromarty says that he reached out to the NF NIL collective in August to finalize the deal, because of course you're not going to pay people that don't show up, and how some of these NIL deals work. I got a son playing college football, know a bunch of kids that have NIL deals and how, and here is how the majority of them work. There are, there's not just like, there will be some upfront payment usually, but then the rest of it will be broken up as the season goes along. And then as the year goes along, so they're not just going to be like, here's a million dollars. All right. The, uh, go ahead and transfer out like Quinn Ewers did from Ohio State. That's not what, what, what happens. They have understanding that there is a different way to do it. And this is why these deals need to be out in the open because this is like drug dealing. It's like if a drug dealer gets robbed, what the hell is he going to do? And you can equate the player to the drug dealer or you can equate the school to it. Either or way. If they don't follow through on the deal, what are you going to do? Call the police and say that they, that they took your money and drugs? No, you can't. So, but this is a recourse that this kid, if he's telling the truth, had. And per Cromartie, I reached out to the coaches halfway through camp. He said, I reached out politely. Hey, I understand you guys are midway through camp. It's a quarterback competition, but the NIL agreement hasn't been sent out. Can we speak on this? He said nothing back for a couple of days, uh, for a couple of, until a couple of weeks ago. I approached them again. I said, hey, you know what's going on. I even offered to meet them halfway. And I said, I understand you're trying to get 100000 within the next four months. That may be hard, but can we get him 10000 a month? And they said, no. 
I said, how about 5,000? They came back back with, we can give him 3,000 a month for the next four months, take it or leave it. So, and then you got Chris Cabot, who is Cromartie's boss over at Equity, and he gave a comment that the delay in the contract came out of an understanding that contracts can't be signed until after enrollment. So this is why the July versus the commitment date happened. And since that report dropped, we've had an interesting development from the, the first, from the first lady who reported Paloma um, Villacana. And that's the Fox five Las Vegas reporter who co-hosts Barry Odom show who said Sluka had been bought off of UNLV's roster by another team. She then tweeted this Fox five has confirmed that former UNLV quarterback, Matt Sluka was verbally promised a minimum of a hundred thousand dollars from a UNLV assistant coach for transferring there. The reports of Sluka only receiving a $3,000 relocation stipend are confirmed by his NIL representation. Then you got Yahoo's Ross Dellinger, who got ahead of the group that manages, who got a hold of the group that manages UNLV's collective. And their statement is as follows. Quote, Rob Seen, or Sign, however you S-I-N-E, CEO of Blueprint Sports, which operates UNLV's collective, tells Yahoo Sports that the collective never agreed to a $100,000 deal with Matthew Sluka. It made a payment of $3,000 to Sluka, and we're discussing a monthly payment of $3,000 before, QB, before the QB's decision this week. So, Matthew's ag- uh, Sluka's agent, Matt, uh, Marcus Cromartie of Equity Sports, He first introduced himself via email to UNLV's collective officials in late August. That's what scene sign says. And Cromartie wrote to officials that he was seeking more NIL opportunities through the collective for his client. However, sign scene said that Cromartie is not a registered agent in the state of Nevada. And because of this, he advised Cromartie and Sluka to discuss the situation directly with the coaching staff until Cromartie registers in the state. And sign says that he signed scene says that he has email exchanges with Cromartie. So to recap, an assistant dealing with Sluka and Cromartie did promise six figures and that has been confirmed by Fox 5 Las Vegas, who originally said that he got bought by another team. And then you got Matthew Sluka not enrolling until July and his agent claiming that, that, that that's what delayed the negotiations. Then you got Marcus Cromartie and Blueprint Sports that they didn't engage in negotiations until August. But then the kid wins the job. So Blueprint Sports offered around $12,000 and advised Cromartie to go through the coaching staff for more. Then you got Bob Sluka, the father of UNLV's uh, Matthew Sluka, who told ESPN that that they agreed to the NIL deal with the school back in February, never received any payments, and never asked for any adjustments to the original deal. Quote, we have no idea what the hell happened. So he said, quote, they keep deferring. We don't know. We have to wait. Then it was like, we're going to give him game checks. So we're like, okay, great. And we did not ask for a single dollar more. So Sluka then added that uh, his dad also added to the comments that Matthew's living expenses weren't even covered. So this is not typical quarterback transfer behavior. It, it's not in this new era of NIL. And, um, and we're going to see if UNLV puts anything out because people are going to say, oh, it's an inducement. They can't or whatever. This is why things need to be out in the open. And Bob Sluka also said that um, – that he was told that the NIL deal would be distributed via payment plan, which is which is what I told you. This is normal. And then he was told to wait until classes started, then the games, and during a September 19th, so it's the 25th right now, 
Matt's agent was told that UNLV would be not be paying anything other than the $3,000 location cost. And then this is where his dad says, quote, we are a hardworking family. And to be able to have an athlete like Matt, we don't even really care that much about the money, but there's the principle to it. And he's not the first athlete to have this happen. So to clarify, September 19th, call involved Marcus Cromartie, UNLV head coach Barry Odom, and another UNLV support staff member. And according to Bob Sluka, well, that's according to Bob Sluka. And then Cromartie was told that UNLV would not be paying anything except for the $3,000 relocation cost. And then that set this in motion. So originally, so my take on this is the kid looks bad at first when you're like, damn, somebody bought him off another team. That's cold. That's cold. But here's the thing. The kids get blamed in this a lot. And this is one of the things that with the transfer portal and NIL that I absolutely love is that promises have to be kept now. They have to be kept because if you don't, this can happen to you. And this is also the reason why the NCAA has completely failed the NIL transfer portal situation. They fought against it, spent hundreds of millions of dollars in lawyer fees instead of setting up a system that was going to work. And now we are three games into a four games into a season. And a kid is leaving a program, the program on its way to potentially making the college football playoff as the G five representative. And the reason why this point in time matters is because you get four games to play before you burn your red shirt. And one, and he's a senior. This is not like a freshman because if this were my son and he were a freshman and he's starting, Oh, we going to finish out this season. But I promise you, we out of here after that. Yeah, we we don't even need to talk about no more money. It's it's over. The, the, the conversation is over because you lied. Now, if we find out that either uh, the, that the Sluka family is lying, that's a whole different can of worms. But if the school and the collective welched on their deal, that's a major issue and exactly why things need to be put up in front and and on front street with these NIL deals. And that's why what's happening in Georgia with governor Kemp saying that the school can make direct payments. This is better because now there is accountability and I am in full favor of that. There being what like Georgia has in place, a tiered system that if you're a starter, here's how much that here's your potential pay range or if you're a backup, or if you're a high school recruit. But we're not going to pay a high school recruit starter money because it makes no no sense because now you run the risk of messing up your roster. And then after that first year, if you're a SEC All-American or an All-American, guess what? You can get your bread, homie. (laughs) We We will break the bank open for you. And that's the way it really should be a model to where kids can get a little little bit of cash out of high school if they are sought after because you have value. But you guys can leave in the comments what you think actually happened and what should be done in this situation. But I've seen this kid called a quitter and everything else, and this is insanity to me. If you showed up to work and you guys agreed on a deal and remind you, that this is not like you can sign a deal with your employer because this is backroom shady stuff still. This is dark alley stuff still on some level. Oops. <laughs> so if you think that you would keep showing up to work knowing this is your last opportunity to work, you're a liar because you would tell your kid the same thing. It's the principality, Smokey. It's the principality. So UNLV Athletics has now put out a statement and Brett McMurphy tweeted it out. And uh, I'll read it to you and then we'll 
digest it. Um, football player Matthew Sluka's representative made financial demands upon the university and its NIL collective in order to continue playing. UNLV Athletics interpreted these demands as a violation of the NCAA pay-for-play rules as well as Nevada state law. UNLV does not engage in such activities, nor does it respond to implied threats. UNLV has honored all previously agreed upon scholarships for Matthew Sluka. You notice they put the word scholarships in there. Um, UNLV has conducted its due diligence and will continue to operate its programs within the framework of NCAA rules and regulations, as well as Nevada state law. So, the university is getting ahead of this. They want to make makes it look like that they oh that they're the honorable people. They didn't try to get the kid to transfer from from Holy Cross and agree to pay him a hundred thousand dollars. They're just oh they would never ever do that. Not at UNLV that had Jerry Tarkany in there. Not that place. Come on, man. They're trying to smear. This is a smear campaign. This is a CYA type of statement. Cover your ass, and because they know it's gonna get ugly. Because people are going to ask questions. There's going to be some investigations. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to see where this continues to develop. You guys, make sure that you guys leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Peace out. Catch you guys later.